news. This is the Herdline News. Trying to start some news here. What, 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 are, what are you talking he, about? I didn't know. I didn't think you liked New York. I love. I like. Who says I didn't like New York? Okay, I thought you're, you're a I, Chicago I, guy. Why well, Chicago is cleaner and doesn't smell like cannabis? What's wrong but, with cannabis? Where you gotta get a little cannabis? Right, I gotta. I gotta be clear-eyed to deliver the news. You can't be a journalist out there high as a kite. I, I wake and bake. Eagle-eyed listeners and watchers. Uh, We'll take something away from that little exchange. <laughs> Come on. By the way, what's the weather in Chicago today? Is it above Beautiful. freezing oh, my or wife no? took, took a picture. It, don't send me another one of Gorgeous. Those. Yeah, just stop doing Gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. <laughs> Let's go to the NBA. Uh, bummer. Zion Williamson is out for the playing game. Season on the line against the Kings on Friday. It's a hamstring, according to Woj. Just disappointed. He'll be evaluated in the coming weeks. So even if the Pels get by the, the Kings... Doesn't sound like Zion will be playing anytime soon. I don't know, man. This is just, it's disheartening. I don't know what you say at this point. He's always hurt. Uh, he had got in great shape. He lost a lot of weight. Remember skinny Zion? I was talking about it months ago. Yeah. He dropped a 40 burger on the Lakers' head and then left the game and they they blew it without him. Well, I think I not, not all players. I mean, Anthony Davis had years and years of disappointment. And then the last year and a half has been great. So, you can't give up on Zion. He's too talented. No. He's too productive. But something's gonna uh, uh, it's gonna come to a head with uh, Brandon Ingram here, right? They gotta they gotta decide if poop or get off the pot. Are you gonna extend him or are you just gonna say you know he's not in our future? I, I was never I like Brandon Ingram. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm just okay. I would keep Zion. I think Zion is more physically daunting. I think he sells more tickets, even though he misses games. I think Zion is such a unique physical player i would keep him around brandon ingram's fine you, you, you want to guess the line kings at the zionless pelicans well I, I, I seven points sacramento by seven on the road four three and a half i see one. Oh, i would take sacramento without zion so apparently uh well i gotta i gotta do some more research here i this this is a bit of a surprise to me that you it's would keep only zion over I, i'm with you i thought it would be more than one um, I would keep, yes, of course I would keep Zion. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Zion is, I mean, there's never been a time what I, where I've watched Brandon Ingram and thought, he's unstoppable. I've thought he's hot, he's on a heater. But Zion last night, Lakers had no answers. If you could make him your three or four, no, no, I, I think, think you, I think he would be a great three and a potential two. Potential. If the one, like, let's say your one's like a Luka or Giannis, he's a two. That's a real good two. So your one is Zion and your two is Ingram. I think he's a better two because of his inability. It's like Anthony Davis is the world's best two. Because of his offensively, yeah. he's hit and miss, and, de- and he can get banged up. But Anthony Davis as a two is the best two in the NBA. Yeah, all right. Here's a story you teased earlier, also in the NBA. Raptors center Jonte Porter has received a lifetime ban from the NBA for violating the league's gambling rules. Porter, who is the brother of nugget star michael porter jr allegedly bet on games passed information to a gambler and claimed illness to influence wagers um it's it's a it's an ugly story this came out right around the same time the otani stuff popped and everybody focused on otani there was no gambling stuff with otani it was his interpreter this is a real big story yeah this guy's uh do dumb things win dumb prizes it was just a really bad move this is not you know People, oh, my God, sports gambling. Everybody knows the rules. You don't change it because Tim Donaghy couldn't grow up and control himself. This is an individual player that just made really yeah. bad decisions. Nobody in the league thought this was right. Uh, by the way, Rick Neuheisel went into a betting pool when he was a college football coach. He got in trouble for that. There's just certain things that are common sense that you don't do. So this is not an indictment of the league. It's not an indictment of yeah, gambling. It's, it's an indictment of a guy with really bad judgment. He made some bad decisions. Now, listen, he was a big-time basketball prospect in high school, had, like, back-to-back ACLs, watches his brother come out of injuries. His brother's making, like, $35 million a year next year. Well, his brother's year. a very good player. Yeah. Porter was supposed to be a very good player. It didn't really pan out, so he, he went kind of sideways with some of these decisions. Um, he essentially gave a known NBA better information who then the better put an $80,000 parlay uh, on Porter and ended up winning $1.1 million. They flagged it. And they were like, what's going on here? Then they did the homework and Porter made some bad decisions. Um, listen, it, we've seen NFL players, Calvin Ridley, among others, 
I don't know if the teams and leagues can do a better job of just telling everybody, don't gamble. Listen, you you cannot do it. Because They're going to catch if you. If somebody gets in a DU gets a DUI, don't blame the beer. Blame the person. Don't blame the bagel because you're struggling to lose weight, or the tequila because you got a DUI, or the gambling company or the league because you can't control yourself. We can't ban everything because you're not a grown-up. I know, but the, let's just remember: these are 22, 23-year-old kids. We, we did 22 stupid year things. Old. I know, but you, I wouldn't do this at 22. Let's again. You wouldn't gamble at 20. You lived in Vegas. If didn't I you? played in the NBA, I wouldn't gamble on the NBA. I'd be smarter than that. I yeah. was in Vegas when I was young. I, I would. I would agree. Um, like they just need to be explicit. They're gonna catch you. Okay, they, they have all the information. They're going to eventually get you. Don't don't. By risk the way, I, I, I do this for a living. I have never once asked any of my sources ever, hey, is this guy playing? That would be to me inappropriate. I've asked about a draft prospect. I've asked about a theory on why you do this or that. But because I have a deal with DraftKings, I never ask anybody, hey, is this guy playing? I never do that. That's just inappropriate. I don't know if it's illegal, it's inappropriate. So you got to be smarter than that, right? You can't be doing things like that. I mean, you're an NBA player. You know, that's just a not smart. He's done. I don't know if, that, if he can still go play internationally or... Yeah, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he's going to have options. Uh, I mean, there's, a right, lot of, there's a lot of money globally. You can make a lot of money in a lot of places. You go to Italy, you go to anywhere. Final story, Marvin Harrison Jr. has been seen by many as the top receiver in the draft. We've heard some stuff about neighbors maybe overtaking him. Uh... Some have ranked neighbors Adunze ahead of him, which to me is crazy. Uh, CJ Stroud has chimed in. He does not understand some of this stuff. Put on the tape. <laughs> uh, he's done it from really his freshman year, his true freshman year, to now. Um, when you talk about, I think I heard, I, I read something like he's NFL ready, but other guys are have more potential. That makes no sense. Like what? Like if, if you're NFL ready, how is that not potential? You know, like you want. You want somebody who's been doing it, you know, and for him, um, that's that's what he sleeps, eats, and he breathes, man. Whoever's finna, who's up there, man, be smart. Don't be dumb. <laughs> don't think too hard. Yeah, he's a great player. I don't think there's... So, we, we talked about Neighbors, right, who was catching passes from Jaden Daniels, who's going to go top five. Um, Adunze catching from Penix, who's a first-round pick. By the way, um, who was Marvin Harrison catching passes from this past season? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Not off the top of my head. Yeah, you know, you know where he transferred to? Syracuse. Yeah. Okay. He's out at Ohio State. Like, Marvin Harrison had by far the weakest quarterback. Go back two years, and he's catching passes from Stroud. Unstoppable all season. And then in the playoff game, remember, he, where he was dominating the game well, before he got knocked out with a concussion. I think. You can't overthink it. it you know, I should be. do a mock draft tomorrow. I should do a mock draft. Because there's a lot of different ways to do a mock draft. There is what you're hearing. There is what you would do, and then there's just prediction what mock do you draft. Think Which one should we do tomorrow? I think what you would do. I'm most interested in what Colin Coward would do. Would you really take Jaden Daniels over Drake May at, at two, uh, at four? I'm going to do uh, okay, take, tomorrow. Uh, and you should do no trades, right? <laughs> just straight up. Okay, just straight up. Top 12 picks. What would I do? And if you pick neighbors over Harrison, we're probably going to have words. I, I would, think that's insane. I, I'll tell you right now. I'd pick Caleb number one and Harrison okay. the first. And I, you can like neighbors in Ardunze, but it's Marvin Harris. The, the, the track record is there. Let's not freak There's out. There's three receivers I've seen in my life in college football. Calvin Johnson, Randy Moss, and Harrison. And I'm like, oh, they'll be a star. Jamar Chase is just below that. But that I saw and I thought, yeah, there's zero chance they're going to fail. Like Zero chance. I mean, they may not be 12-time Pro Bowlers, but Marvin Harrison is going to succeed as a rookie in the NFL if he goes anywhere but New England because I don't have, I don't think they have a functional offense. Even in New England, he'd be their best player by far on offense. And then would you, if you were New England, consider, I don't love the third quarterback off the board. I want to take Harrison. Well, I don't even know who their quarterback is projected I think to they're going to get Drake May. That's what I, and I think he's going to play behind Jacoby Brissett for a year or till Thanksgiving. And then I would load up, because they loaded up last year on kickers and interior linemen. I would go get wide receiver talent. Colin, they're going to be drafting back in the top five next year. Okay, I don't see why you take the third best Well, the, the advantage to drafting third is not only the first round. So I would get my quarterback if I'm New England. Get your quarterback third. 
and then the preceding rounds just trade down five or six. You don't have to trade down a lot, but if you like in the second round, if I drop six spots, I could get a third round pick. So I have two threes. In the third round, I could get it, and I could get a fourth or a fifth. So get your quarterback if you can get him. There may not be a Drake May. If you let's say you win five games and you end up with a third pick, next year's quarterback class, the quarterbacks, you don't want to move all that, you don't want to move up. So if Drake May falls to you, the best argument is probably take him and then move down. Like in the second round, at the very top of the second round, I don't think there's a receiver. There's a couple defensive tackles. It's heavy defense in the top of the second round. The bottom of the first, it's a lot of edge guys, corners. Top of the second, it's a lot of interior defensive linemen, edge guys. I don't think that's where I would go. I would go receiver, second, third, fourth, fifth. I would look to move down slightly, accumulate picks. I would draft at least two receivers. So Harrison, um, Daniels, or May. Now, here's the other option. If you can get someone, wouldn't you trade that third pick? Trade back. You need. We talked about this, and we saw the numbers. The Patriots have one of the lowest win totals projected by Vegas. Now, Vegas is not always correct, but there's not a lot of talent. This could be a four-win team next year, Colin. You lose Belichick. Remember, we don't know if the new coach is going to come in the locker room. Like, there's a lot of stuff up in the air in New England. I don't know that I take a quarterback at three. I think I can't do a. Tra- I can't do any trades. I don't. I mean, then it's like you know, everybody wants to trade back, right? Outside of the Bears. <laughs> I mean, I forgot. It is your show. No, I will. I think it's the Chargers want to trade back. Yeah. I mean, then what do you have? Three, four, five all trading back? It's, it gets it's a little confusing. confusing. All right. J-Mac with the news.